Hey everyone, welcome to Planes Over It. Uh, we are continuing with our uh, radio navigation series and a standard disclaimer that has been there all the time. Okay. So today we are doing uh, airborne weather radar. The airborne weather radar is used to provide pilots uh, majorly with the uh, information regarding weather ahead in flight. And uh, you can also use the weather radar uh, to display terrain features. The main component uh, is the transmitter and the receiver along with the antenna, which is stabilized in pitch and roll. Okay, so even if the aircraft is pitching up and down or rolling left or right, the antenna is stabilized to give accurate information about weather. Uh, the airborne weather radar is located in the redome area of the aircraft, which is the nose of the aircraft. Okay. The principle, what is the principle? It uses two principles actually. So one is the echo principle, which is used to find the distance or depict the range. And the searchlight principle is used to depict relative bearing of the target. Okay, where it is located and how far. There are two principles that it uses. The functions are as follows. It detects the size of water droplets, determines the height of the cloud top using tilt, map the terrain, which gives navigational information okay however nowadays uh, they don't use it for navigation much because you have a terrain database nowadays separately installed on the commercial jets but still it has the option you can still use it for mapping terrain let's look at the antenna and the beam the antenna is a parabolic or a flat plate antenna which produces a pencil shaped beam and also a fan shaped beam so the pencil beam is used for weather and the fan beam is generally used for terrain. Okay, so this is how the antenna looks, the flat plate antenna. So let's talk about the beam itself. How important is the beam to us? The formula is as uh, on your screen, the beam width in degrees is given as 17 to wavelength by the antenna diameter. Now the second point is very important here. The beam width must be as narrow as possible for efficient target resolution. Okay, meaning to separate clouds, okay, it is important to have a narrow beam. But a narrow beam, if you see the formula, narrow beam means very small beam width will require a large antenna diameter, okay, which is not possible in the aircraft. Hence, therefore, to produce narrower beam, that is smaller, smaller beam width, it is essential to use shorter wavelength, which basically means higher frequency, okay. Now, what is the effect of the beam width? This uh, diagram clearly tells us. Uh, there is a couple of clouds close to the aircraft. The narrower the beam width, the better the resolution, meaning it is able to separate the two clouds distinctively, okay, because it's narrow beam width here. As far it goes, the beam width, okay, has increased. If you see, this is the beam width now. If you see, both the clouds are returning as a single echo. Okay, coming back to the display as one cloud, whereas it is not. Okay, so this is the impact of the beam width. The narrower the beam width, the better the target resolution. Okay, what is the frequency? The optimum frequency is one that has a wavelength comparable to the size of large water droplets and wet hail. These droplets are about three centimeter across. Okay, so the typical frequency that is there is 9375 plus or minus 30 megahertz. Okay, so with this uh, with this frequency, the radar also produces narrow efficient beams. So if you put it in lambda equal to C by F, so C is obviously speed of uh, light, okay, because that's how the signal is traveling. And you have the frequency we have put in here in megahertz, 10 to the power 6. So we get around about 3.2 centimeters, which is pretty much the size of the water droplet. Then you have some color coding on the uh, display okay so weather radar has a color coding display which is according to the intensity of rainfall the areas of greatest potential turbulence occur where the color zones are closest together okay so black is very light or no returns green is light returns yellow is medium returns red is strong returns and magenta is turbulence because of the rainfall itself so if your colors are very close together you can expect magenta color turbulence okay Let's see an example where you can use uh, the formula to ca calculate the cloud height. So determine the altitude of the cloud top. Okay, altitude of the cloud top for the following. 
range is 45 nautical miles, tilt angle is 3.5 degrees, beam width is 5 degrees, and the aircraft is flying at 35,000 feet, flight level 350. So height of the cloud formula is given by tilt minus beam width by 2 into range into 100. Okay, so you just put in the values in this, you have the range, you have the beam width, you have the tilt. So the height of the cloud is 4,500 feet. Okay, so 4,500 feet is from the present position. So we want the altitude. The altitude is, of course, 35,000 feet plus 4,500 feet, which is at 39,500 feet. Okay. So that's it. That was a short video on the airborne weather radar. I'm sure you uh, liked it. There's a quiz link in the description, which you can give it a try. And subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page for regular updates. Click the bell icon, send this uh, video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Comment below if you have any doubts. I'll surely get back to you. And uh, these are the links that are there where you can uh, hit me as well. Cheers and happy landings, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.